Go into your room. That's right. Sit on that fat <laughs> of yours and do nothing but listen to records. Well, Michael, it's uh, it's really a pleasure for you to be here because we've known each other for 20 years. Yeah. This is the very first time you've been to Music Direct. Yes. So I'm quite excited to show you around. Then let's Great. go. Let's do it. Okay, so these are the orifices. So this is where all the uh, creatives work. This is all the graphic designers, the art directors, the computer guys, the web programmers. Everyone that does creative work works up here. Um, but this is going to be a long tour, so uh, let's get going. Okay, so this is where all the buyers work, all the hardware buyers, all the music buyers. Um, there's a lot to buy. Yeah. The best thing about this company is, is that we have a massive amount of people that could work here. We're in Chicago. Yeah. There's millions of people. Everyone from the owner of the company to the guys that work in the warehouse are all music freaks. Everyone is playing music all over this building all day. And they all have turntables and they all love vinyl. Excellent. So uh, this is a, a really fun place. It's a shame that uh, we got here after we closed and no one's here, but I think there's still some cool stuff to yeah, see. Yeah, and it'll make it easier to, to shoot video and be able, and be able to hear everything. Yeah. So there's turntables at every desk and everyone just uh, gets to rock at their, at their space. So in here is where the sales guys sit. You can smell the flop sweat. You can just <laughs> smell it, you know, even though they're not here. I like, well, I like the that. The thing about the sales office is, is that we're just normal Midwesterners and we take care of people. And Are there normal Midwesterners? I guess so. Yeah, we, uh, you know, our business motto is very simple. If you take care of people and you do the right thing, they'll come back. They'll come back. That's right. That is right. That's what Brian Ferry said. So when we found this building, um, it used to be a wine warehouse. So the entire building was insulated so that if anything, it never gets above 80 degrees and it never gets below 60. For all the vinyl we have, wow. this is, was the perfect yeah. place. And you know, the office space is, uh, just looks like offices, but when you see the warehouse in back, I think you'll understand why this was the perfect building for us. Whoa. It's pretty big. What came in from Holland? Uh, this... Marantz? I don't know what's in here. This might be going to Holland. But you'll see all the racks of gear. So this is all, these are all things, products for sale? Absolutely. Hardware. And uh, most of the people that will watch this uh, know... I, I have one of those. I have an 8801, or I think... I, that's a great preamp tuner processor. Yeah, it's really the only one that we sell um, yeah. because it's such a, it's really the pre-pro for a music lover. Yeah, it's it's costly. Oh, they're expensive. Yeah, but it's great. But most of them are just chock full of video features chock. only and they do not... They sound terrible. Sound good. So Definitely. as we walk, you'll see uh, tons of gear everywhere. So when we first came into this space, it was filled with wine, and yeah. uh, we knew we had found the right building. The wine was still there? Yeah. Wow, did you keep any of it? They said they were going to leave us some bottles, and but they, they left us some two-buck chuck. Oh, man. Yeah, but, uh, That's a good piece. Yeah, here's some uh, balanced audio technology stuff, VPI stuff everywhere. Well, the bat stuff, but even this, this Yamaha thing is very good. Yeah, it's a, a reasonably priced integrated amp, and, and that's got it a sells great. moving magnet. Uh, Input on right there. It's got moving magnet and yeah, moving. And it's right. good. The one the one I listened to at a guy's house was moving magnet only, I think. And he had an inexpensive musical turntable and he had uh, some of the, the ELAC speakers. Not an expensive system. And it was just rocking. It was fantastic. Yeah, and you know what I love about the old Yamaha stuff is beyond just the eighties look of it is that that loudness compensation knob yeah and that's just for regular people that might need a little bit more bottom end in their system well we all fletcher munson you know fletcher and munson they, they broke up they were a couple and you can't they, no they can't talk about it in those days because it was verboten <laughs> but fletcher and munson were were a couple and uh they had they broke up but but they definitely did the research that shows that at lower volume your ear is sensitive to bass mm -hmm. and you need to boost it up and that's it, it's a good idea yeah i yeah. love that yamaha knob yeah. So here's some Macintosh gear, all the NAD stuff. BPI Cliffwood in truffle. 
Is that the that's the color? That's the finish name. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got to review uh, an Avenger for Stereophile. I should review this for, for my website, but they don't they haven't given me anything. They've been just like, you know, you guys haven't given me anything either. I got to talk to the the music direct people about reviewing one of their turntables, but they have they've been very uh, They've been afraid of me. Is that what it is? I don't know anything about it. A lot of the accessories that we've sold since uh, we opened the doors here uh, 30 years ago have uh, really built this whole business. Hmm. So something like that is just a simple accessory that goes under a subwoofer. Not Here's a lot of our solid steel racks, a lot of our REL subs, our mobile fidelity turntables. You have a lot of you have a lot. You stuff is uh, doing really well for these us. are so good. These are such good speakers. Well, everything that they make yeah. has been just. Uh, Andrew's a genius. I'm not, I'm not paid. Success. I'm not Elac paid. has been uh, just a stunning success. Yeah, because they're great the and they're not expensive and they and they're. Well, those new Adante speakers, yeah. twenty five hundred and five thousand, are really elevating the yeah. performance now, level. Now, how long has that been? Uh, They've only been available for a few months. And if you didn't done what with those? They're doing great. Yeah, people love them, it's right? It's definitely a different price point, so they're not going to sell in the kind of quantities that the B6s right. sold right. for $279. Right. different thing. But people who have had them in their homes love them. Yeah, and the B6 is for them. It's not even for the money. They're just great it's speakers. It's a great speaker. Great speaker. And I, that's what I wrote. I wrote, I, my headline was, the ELAC B6s are not good for the money. It was a very, <laughs> right. you know, terrible. But then, but then I said, no, it's not good for the money. They're just they're good. They're just good. Was that smart? Andrew, that like? Andrew is a great engineer. Yeah. And a now great this is designer. good. This is a good product too. All the benchmark stuff is and really CI, good. And, and Channel, uh, Channel Island, Island is a great He's company. at the show. Their their pre phono pre is really good. I just got their outboard power supply, and I'm going to add it to the to the unit and review it as a separate. I don't know thing. if you've seen that this came back. Yes, it's I did a, a video while. about it. I, I haven't seen it. I begged them for a decade to bring it back. Yes. I think the first hundred we brought in sold immediately. So over here, we've got our uh, packing station where uh, we've got everybody working all day where they pull the orders, they put them in boxes and ship them out to our customers all day long. Here's your, your Riga section is here. Yeah, we've been a, a, a great Riga dealer for a very long time. Our relationship goes back almost 30 years and uh, yes. they're great turntables yes, at every they are. price point. Oh. Yes, I visited the factory last year. We got the P1s up there, P2s. The 8 and 10 are exceptional. Yep. And it's a completely different design from most other high mass designs. He's, uh, Roy has it's the opposite. Philosophy. Right. And, if, you know, I, I believe either high mass or low mass, if you do it right, can work great. Or it can work terrible. Yes. He does it right. On the other hand, Roy also believes you shouldn't clean your records. That you should just let the stylus push the dust out of the way. That's what he believes. Now. Oh. That is wrong, <laughs> and I went. I've, I stayed at his house. This is like 20 years ago when I first got it. I stayed at his house, and I went to Bino's, one of the great used record stores ever ever made. It's gone now, and I bought a bunch of records, and I brought it back. And he had three turntables. He had the, the best he made in the middle and the, the bottom. They were like on the wall, on wall stands. I said, Roy, let's test out your theory of clean, clean and dirty records. So I put a record on uh, uncleaned and it wasn't a filthy record I wouldn't do it was, it was a dirty record though sure put it on there halfway through the static built up and there was so much schmutz the arm lifted up and hung and hung in the air like Sorry. this I said Roy you have to clean records the stylus won't push it out of the way but he, they still say that I still believe that well he's uh, earned himself his own opinion yeah and his other opinion is rigidity 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 and he thinks rigidity trumps setting stylus rake. I, that was not a political statement, Trump's. I'm using it in the sense of, of <laughs> cards, okay? Um, so something interesting over here is a new acquisition. Oh, you cryo, you got a cryo machine. Yeah, we're cryoing stuff now and we're doing experiments. Uh, we're experimenting with cables, we're experimenting with tubes, we're experimenting wow. with phono cartridges. Uh, we're doing a lot of listening and trying to see what uh, you know what the results are going to be, wow. and uh, if this turns into something special, um, I think you'll hear uh, some more from us about what we're going to do with the cryo machine. And so, like, you could buy the regular version of a cartridge, or for a certain amount of money, actually get a, a cryo, cryo version. version. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So um, what you we've with absolutely it? heard differences with cables. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure. I mean, it's uh, it's really a, a very fascinating physics 
lesson to learn about how this works, why it affects the molecular structure of, yeah. of what you place in, in the machine. But um, you know, cables can't make any difference whatsoever. There's no difference in any cables. I would imagine that all of the people that would be watching your video would know the truth about yes. that. And you know what? If these people who think otherwise would only sit down and listen, and then they go, oh, but that's not scientific, you know, you, you have confirmational bias. And I tell them... Well, if, you're, if you can trust your own ears, yeah. what, say, what else what? can you trust? Every mix you've ever heard, every recording that you think is fantastic, was mixed by somebody who played with the faders and went, I like that better, I like that better. They didn't do ABX testing of every mix, little move they made. They trusted their ears, yeah. and the good ones proved that they knew what they were talking about. Trust your ears. I think the reality is, is you don't have to be an engineer to hear the differences. All you have to be is open-minded and to sit down in a chair and listen. That's right. And if you think that you don't hear a difference, Fine. then buy whatever cables you want. Exactly. But if you do hear a difference, then there's many options for That's everyone. Right. That's right. You know, I once did a, I once did a put on my website audio of two different phono cables. I just same recording, mm -hmm. just change the phono cable. And I said, listen to these. Uh, is it the same cable? Is it a different cable between the two? And which do you like better and why? And people made, and they were all right. One is brighter, one is not as bright. And they, some liked the brighter one, some liked the duller one. Some thought the duller one sounded sweeter and smoother, and the mm -hmm. other one was bright. Others thought the other one that was brighter was just more detailed, whatever. They all heard it. So some uh, graduate student in Texas writes this story. Oh, those snarky audio files. Well, there's this website. There's this audio file, Michael Fremer, and he posted these two these <laughs> two files of these that the one's brighter than the other. Well, I took those files and I put them on Audacity, and guess what? One of those recordings, the turntable was running at point oh 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 one percent faster than the other and that accounts for the brightness and I've put that fi those files back on my website with speed corrected so it's the same speed and no one can hear the difference so I put that up on my website and say go to this blankety blanks website and <laughs> and they all went to his website and guess what they guessed it <laughs> they all knew which file was exactly. which exactly I don't understand why these people make such a fuss and they get so worked up about this because they're if they're, you're not into it don't be into it let all the people that enjoy this hobby enjoy it, and if it's not for you, that's fine too. You're very rabbinical. Ugh. I tend to be more insane. Were you impressed that I knew what this was? You should be. Of yes. course. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's been fun to play around with. It's a Cryotron TC20, cutting costs through cold innovation. The Cryotron TC20. Why, why, why let Music Direct do this when you could get your own Cryotron TC20? And if you order now, we'll send you a second Cryotron TC20 absolutely free, except for shipping and handling costs. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> These are, uh, no, it's not. These are record sleeves. Yeah. This is all record sleeves. Oh, here's so the part. This is the fun part. Oh. And every day, hundreds and hundreds of new records come out. They take up so much space. This is just the section where our staff picks all of the orders, but there's backup boxes of all the albums in here because there just isn't enough room. And where's that? We'll show you that on the, on the way out. So this but is what you have. Um, this is where all of your basic stock is of all the different exactly. things that you sell. Exactly. If you're looking for your Pink Floyd or your Led Zeppelin or your Beatles or your Stones or your Nirvana or wow. anything, it's all here. And so, so let's see. This is this is the the original. Hmm. This is the uh, Astral Weeks that came out from. Uh, Warner Brothers it's on uh, very good. great vinyl good. pressed at RTI, done from the analog tapes. It's this very is a good. great record. I had the tape in my hand. That must have been a special day. That's one it of was. my all-time When you have a tape in your hand of certain things. I was at Bernie Grumman's. I When I was there years ago, all the Led Zeppelin tapes were there, sitting there. I can't believe Just sitting. That. And I said, "What? Wow, you that that classic released that a while ago?" He goes, "I keep calling them and tell them to pick up their tapes. They don't want them. They don't want to come get them. They're here for them. And the reason is that they have their digital copies and they think that's archival. And now that vinyl's back, they all care. But they didn't. They, they didn't care. You know, the guys in uh, in Sebastopol at Mobile Fidelity in the mastering studio, they're." 
they have a, a, a massive vault where they keep all the masters and they yeah. get to touch everything. And I was fortunate enough to be there one day where they were mastering uh, the last waltz and all the tapes had things written in it that says uh, Neil Young helpless. Uh, Joni Mitchell is on track 17 or, you know, don't forget, you know, turn the fader up because yeah it's just just when you hold that stuff it's just yeah, it's, it's history. so special it is history and this period you know this period of time this music was made is is like classical music it will it will go on now this is the new this is the new one that just came out yeah this is the yeah it's no comment no comment but my my opinion was these records are so special and they're getting inducted into the, into the Hall of Fame this weekend, that these should be done by a reissue label that will take the tape. These weren't done from tape. These were, these were pressed at, at GZ. Mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, the files were probably sent uh, by, by internet, and some guy sat and cut it. Now, who was the guy? At least I know if they send files to Chris Bellman or you know at Bernie Grumman's, he's going to do the best job. Some of the stuff he does is spectacular, even Incredible. though it's from a digital source. It's spectacular. This was done by a workman, probably, who just got the file and cut it, as opposed to somebody who was trying to... It's a problem. And they've got to get over releasing these great titles. Well, I also think it's, uh, you know, the artists themselves, when they get involved and they tell the labels that, look, if you're going to reissue our records, I want it done from the analog tape. That's right. And I want these records pressed at a That's certain right. pressing plant because we want our fans to, to have the That's best right. records possible. And that makes a big difference. Yep. Yeah, all the Pink Floyd reissues have been just uh, unbelievable. You know, when there's a, a, a large catalog that hasn't been available for a couple of decades yep. and it comes back out, people are rabid. Yep. I mean, and anything Pink Floyd or anything Led Zeppelin, when the Led Zeppelin releases started coming, it, does it was just insane. They were terrible. They're not good, though. I think some of them aren't, are not Ugh. as bad as you think. Not good. <laughs> not good. Okay. I, the, sometimes the artist, should not, the artist should be supervising, but they shouldn't be involved. And that was a cut from 9624 files that, you know, if John Bonham was alive, he would slam Jimmy in the head for what his drums sound like on those records. That's so it's interesting, what I'm seeing here is that you will put Elvis, it's an Elvis section as opposed to a uh, org music section. So in other words, every, yeah. everything that Elvis does. Everything is alphabetical in, uh, in the picking area, by except artists. for the uh, mobile fidelity section, which is uh, separated from everything. Interesting way to do it. Guys, everyone in the warehouse, in fact, almost everyone at Music Direct has been here for like 10 years or more. Yeah. So, you know, when there are three different versions of a record, the guys need to know so that the customer gets, whether it's the 45, the 33, or right. the, an OJC version versus a, a, a Music Matters reissue. Um, and our guys really know everything about every record in here. They know That's one of the problems with records shopping in a store now. And the stores do a very bad job. You walk in, you go to the Elvis section, you, there's the same record for $10, for $20, and for $50. Which do you buy? And people are you not... buy the one for $50. Well, that's the best one. It's going <laughs> to be the best one. It usually will be. Yeah, so it just keeps going, and uh, well, you know, I didn't even... who did this? Okay, see this is Jackpot Records. Jackpot, it's the mono version. That's interesting, and sourced from original master tapes. Now that's tricky, because sourced doesn't mean it was cut from tape. It could be they got the original tape, they digitized it, and released it from that. But it at least could it's. Be, but that's probably not a very expensive record. No, that's. And if they did a great transfer from the uh, original tape, that could be a really good sounding record. That's right. I didn't... Tommy. It's I didn't... a recent. I... Yeah, I didn't know about that. Call. Oh my God, there they are. It's the Alta Cockers. And the Alta Cockers are up there, they're doing it live at the Albert Hall. And I bet you they're, they're still good. I saw them about. Eight years ago, they were really good. And which version is this? Do we know which version this is? It's the current version, just from uh, Universal. Do we know what what it was cut from? We don't know. We don't. That's the problem. Because the one that Classic did, that Chris Bellman cut from the tape, is insanely spectacular. Yeah, that's been out of print for quite some time. I know. The I Loco know. The record is all analog. This is a great sounding album. Stan Ricker. The late Stan Ricker. Yep. What else do we have? 
The new Jack White? I gotta buy the new Jack White. Do you have the new Jack White here? Can I buy it from you? Have you heard this one? Yeah, this is a really, really great uh, all analog record. Oh, I, th I reviewed this, I think. Those guys are cool, the Rams are record. Mm -hmm. There's so many people that really get it and they're working yep. really hard to do things the right way. Yep. Here's the Neil Young section. It's pretty uh, important to us. We sell a ton of Neil records to our customers. Yeah, these were so, because he, he, he does it right also. Yeah, you he's know, really serious. These about are so good. Vinyl. I would love to get to interview him, but I never did. You know why? I think, I think, you know what I did to him once? So, do you have Journey Through the Past here? Is it one of the records here? I'm sure we do. So, that was a movie that he did. And uh, he decided he was going to premiere the movie at the Orson Welles Cinema in Boston. That's what he decided to do. And I was on WBCN at the time, so I was part of the, the hip wazi, you know, so I was invited to the op to the grand open, you know, to the, the premiere of the movie. And we're all Neil fans, obviously. Even back then, he'd only had a couple of, you know, it was 73 or something, so only a couple of records, but still mm -hmm. Buffalo Springfield, yeah. big fan. So we all go and we sit down. And I knew almost everybody in that theater because it was all, you know, the crowd. Sit down, the movie starts. It was really a bad movie. <laughs> It was, you know, it's the cover of the, of the record is the guys on the beach with the horses and, you know, the Ku Klux Klan. And then it cuts for him and Carrie Snodgrass in a record store. I mean, it's, it was just an awful. And after about 20 minutes, you could tell that people were getting really fidgety in their seats. You could just, you know, the vibe you get. So I turned it into Mystery Theater 2000. Before there was such a thing as Mystery Theater, I started <laughs> telling, you know, like making up dialogue and telling jokes and people started laughing and when I'm encouraged and people are laughing and laughing and I took over the whole movie for the, for the ne next hour <laughs> and when it was over there were applause for me not for the movie <laughs> this is a true story it's so obnoxious and so the lights come on and my friend the late Charlie McKenzie Charlie McKenzie who uh, discovered Boston Hmm. Boston, he was working for Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers had that tape from Tom Scholz, because Tom Scholz was in Boston, Tom Scholz was from Boston, and Warner Brothers passed yeah. on Boston, and so Charlie McKenzie said, can I take that, can I have that tape, and they gave him the tape, he took it over to Epic, and that's how that happened, and Charlie passed away, unfortunately, but anyway, so um, the lights come up, and Charlie's, in, about 10 rows, he turns to me, and he goes, hey, Frema, very funny, Turn around, look who's right behind you. And I turn around, and right behind me was Neil Young and oh David Crosby. God. Right behind me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> they didn't say anything. They didn't say anything. And uh, from that day forward, I never got to interview <laughs> Neil Young. <laughs> that makes sense. I, I don't know whether he remembers my name. He got my name after that. But I did French kiss Daryl Hannah. That's so you have that connection. That's another story. <laughs> okay, we're not going to tell that one. So, uh, Shins. Ah, Shins, I told you a good Shins story. Yeah. I don't have this record. That's one I don't have. We got the Paul Simon catalog down here. Wow. We got... Uh... This Graceland came out fantastic. Yeah. Cut from the tape. Not The original's DMM. And this is much better. Yeah. Sometimes reissues can be better than the original. Okay, Tom Port. <laughs> and this e this even came out good. I mean, they really worked hard. You know, the tapes for the early albums were from overseas. They found the copies that were sent overseas in the, in the 60s, and they were able to get them, bring them back to, to do that box. Well, we uh, just Except, finished doing Bridge Over Troubled Waters. Right, that and, they uh, didn't get from overseas. We they, had the original tape, yep. and uh, I'm I'm pretty excited about it. I can't wait to hear that. Cannot wait to hear that. That's I, in fact, I played that record just the other night. I played a one A pressing, a one, I, all my different various pressings. That's my job. And <laughs> the one I did, job. the one I did sound the best. If you can it's, get it. It's not a bad job. Silver apples. I've got an original. This is another jackpot. See this jackpot record here. They say ninety six twenty four taken from original. Good for them. This is not a record for everybody, but it's one of the first like weird. It's. Good for them, Jackpot Records. I gotta find out who they are. This is good. I saw them live for my birthday one year. It was a very good, very good show. Ah, she's the greatest. This is a great album. You have to buy she's this record. I reviewed artist. it, I wrote. Ah, she's so good. She's, she's the, the greatest. Real deal. She is the real deal. Get that record, Cecile McLaurin Salvant. Here's a good 
<laughs> Beatles, so, stereo Beatles. Yeah, I'm not sure we have any of the mono sets left. This is this is tape. No, that's the new uh, box set. Uh, I think it's a uh, eight LP. I didn't know. I didn't know about it. They didn't tell me about that. I do know that he he said they have the tapes and there's Eleanor Roosevelt because this was a benefit concert. So Eleanor Roosevelt gives a speech and and Chad said, "Hey, should I should I put Eleanor Roosevelt at the beginning of the should I?" No, 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 no. Just put scarlet ribbons at the <laughs> put the encore at the end. I don't look. I loved Eleanor Roosevelt, but I don't think we want to have Eleanor Roosevelt on there. It's great record. Yep. Yes, and his catalog, neat. You know, he's had like I think there's been a drop off in interest in Elvis Costello for some reason. And those those first eight or ten records were just absolutely fantastic. And kind of loop probably still sells. Of course. Yeah. It's as, a, as fast as we can make them. Yeah. But the new uh, one step boxes is really uh, this has been it's one not of so the most bad. successful. We we have like uh, forty copies left wow. uh, out of the six thousand. Wow. And that came out great too. Yeah. And people asked where the source was and I told them that you, you actually played back the the three M tape. That's exactly correct. We had the original master recording for it. And, That's amazing. Uh, the guys in Sebastopol spent I don't know six months trying to squeeze every bit of detail off that original. No pun intended. Tape. Bit because it's digital. <laughs> um, and we think it's one of the best versions of that album ever. It is. Because uh, I've got the original Mofi. It's not as good. No. And I have the original. Which I think was Bob Ludwig cut it. It was a Quiex version that was yeah, uh, yeah. it was very good. Yeah. But I think we got better bass definition, better high frequency separation. Yep. It's it's really a great pressing. The Weezer, that blue album that you just pulled out. Um, Does that sell well? You can't even imagine. Really? Um, it overtook uh, John Lennon's Imagine, which was our bestseller. Wow. Um, this is the best-selling record that uh, Mobile Fidelity has made. Really? Yeah. Now, who would have thought that? Um, Urban Outfitters. They sell this. They bought so many copies of this album. It was just the right music for the right time, and uh, it was a... Uh, a humongous success. And this one is and from the original tape. Oh, yeah. Whereas another one you released had, didn't have the same, it, it, it was not an original master recording, it was a silver thingamajig. I don't, from the Weezer catalog? I think so. I'm, I'm not sure. I think that. so. Because these are all. I can't know your catalog better than you. This is original. Oh, I never got that one. I never, I never got most of these. But I that's okay. The I, have, whole... I owe you so many reviews, I can't even ask you for anything else. And, and yes, you do have them. Because everything that we put out ends up on your doorstep. Oh. This was a pet project. Do I have um, that? I don't know. I'm sure you do. I don't. But I, I we had look. to uh, get all the original tapes to make this compilation. And, and making this, yeah. yeah. Um, and the fact that, they, that the labels trust our engineers enough to cut up these tapes yeah. is just... They didn't make a one-off copy because that would have been easier. No. Because the, the azimuth can't if be the same. If we did that, it wouldn't have this stripe on it. But the azimuth can't be the, it would, so they had to sit there and tweak the azimuth as they went as they, they cut yeah. the record. Wow, that's a lot that's of work. That's why it takes so long wow. to make a mobile fidelity record. Wow. And it's one of the things that really differentiates our label from everyone else. Um, there are a lot of great people cutting records today, yeah. but they don't, they're not afforded the time to really check all that stuff and, yeah. and make all those moves on the boards where a record needs to be cut in one day. But at mobile fidelity, they're given the time to do whatever they need to do to make the best version that they can and if it takes weeks to do it takes weeks yeah so we're just in a really fortunate position to allow the engineers all the time they need to to cut these records and make them as close to the original master tape as they can yeah that's uh, realistic pillow. that was a fan yeah. that was one of your best easily yeah. the original mono tapes yeah. I mean, and that's why the box is almost empty well, and and you know what I gotta do I gotta do this too uh, these are these are uh, I've written about these and I've written about them but I've not reviewed them I got these are these come out. it's like it's like the John Wesley Harding I'm, I said to myself I've got that original mono I've got the Sundays mono I've got the Columbia box mono I've got all the monos what, what am I gonna hear from this what, I know this record and your mono at 45 is the best one it's so much better you hear you hear things because it's a it's a bass heavy record it's a weird recording and yet the other version is, is things to hear that you didn't hear before anywhere. Ooh, 
We've got uh, all the best early Dylan records out now on stereo and mono, and uh, you know it was just such an honor to be allowed into the Dylan vault yeah. and to to put these records out. It's you know yeah, it's another thing that will always be. It doesn't get better than uh, getting deep into the Dylan catalog. And this is fantastic. I, I, I wrote about this in, in a review of a piece of equipment or, a, turn, or, or a, uh, a loudspeaker review or a turntable review. This is better than the original. I've got an original promo copy. This came out better. And Ry Cooter, you know, if you're looking for, like, authentic music, American music, and this guy is just... Uh, he was the real deal. You know, when I first saw him live? I first saw him live! When I went to Boston University Law School, Warner Brothers had a traveling show. And the traveling show was Ry Cooter, Randy Newman. Um, oh, there were two other acts on the Warner Brothers uh, label. I forgot who they were. So Randy Newman came out and did a bunch of songs from his first album. Ry Cooter came out and did songs from his first album. And I forgot who the other artists were. Damn, but they, it was like the most bizarre combination of people. I, don't have, I do not have that. Yeah, that's brand new. Yeah. We struggled for a long time on how to make this sound as good as it possibly yeah. can. Yeah. And our, you know, they just have this philosophy of do no harm and try to capture what happened in the studio. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, my joke is is uh, this record sounds so good you can hear them doing lines off the console. Actually, in each copy that I when I open it up, you can actually put it up your nose. <laughs> the record. It's an amazing catalog, a good catalog of stuff that people will be buying for, for, for forever. Yeah, the exciting thing is that we're always doing work um, on the cutting system. Um, we're always upgrading amplifiers, cutting heads, yep. electronics, cabling. Um, Cables don't make any difference. Come on, cut the crap. Really right? hard and invest as much money as we can to help the engineers do their job. You know, we've we've been talking to Mobile Fidelity customers now for over 20 years, yeah. and uh, ever since uh, Jim rescued the label from bankruptcy, and these these music lovers have been asking. What turntable should I buy? What cartridge should I buy? And it really took a long time, but we got to the point where we had the ability to bring a line of electronics out with Mobile Fidelity's brand on it. Yeah. And it has been the most gratifying and interesting and exciting thing that, that we've ever been involved in. Do you do reviews of turntables? Uh, no, no. This is an, another interesting line of products. Yeah, they make some great, great small stuff. DACs, great yep. phono preamps, uh, great little accessories that help you get more from your digital files and uh, from smart your headphones. Guys. These are smart guys. Yeah, they're affordable pieces yep. and uh, they really sound great. I agree. Our relationship with this vendor has been tremendous and uh, they were just here doing training with our staff. So we're, we're thrilled to be an iFi dealer. Now all of their old DACs have now been upgraded to MQA status. So uh, Is that can, a software update if you have one already? Yeah. You can just... Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. So here you got cables. The big snake oil department. Careful, you may get bitten in the snake oil. As I tell these people, <laughs> can't you come up with a better cliche than snake oil? But you know what? Those people are only hurting themselves. They are losing out. They buy these expensive systems and they, they obstinate about cables can't make a difference and then they don't try it out and they're, they're just cheating themselves. Stupid. Well, I know it sounds ridiculous to a lot of people, but we have cables that range from thirty nine ninety five to thousands of dollars. Right, and, uh, that's right. We have a lot of customers that swear by them. So. Of course. Of course they do because they, they bring them home and they hook them up and they hear it. Oh no, it's confirmational bias. They're fooling themselves. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You don't see recording studios using any of that stuff. Yeah, you do actually in some places. So we've got accessories, we've got record care stuff. The record care oh, bag oh. is just massive. Sure. Yeah, I feel like we've probably sold more VPI 16.5 cleaning machines uh, than anyone in the world. Probably, probably so. And you can stream all this music for nothing. <laughs> and yet people will spend, it's like Jack White's new album. He sold 27,000 copies of his new album the first week. You could stream it for nothing, but 27,000 people said, I want to own this. I want to support the artist. I want to have this thing on my wall so I can pull it out and play what I want. And when I play it, I can't open my computer and there would be an advertisement there for that record. That's the creepiest thing. 
you go to the bathroom in your house and you open your computer and there's a toilet paper ad. How do they know you're just taking a dump? <laughs> How do they find this out? They know it. Wow, there's just so much. Yeah, I'll show you some little stuff. Just some of these so much. Well, what are JVC records? What's in here? Uh, those might be old copies. We have some stuff that's... Uh, From the JVC? Uh, yeah, these wow. are actual uh, super vinyl I don't know if CPs? I can get one of these. No, these are actual pressings of, uh, this is a Marnie Nixon record. You know, they, we just bought them Super, all. When JVC they, Super Vinyl has this, there, people have this oh, yeah. fetish over it. It was great. It was the best vinyl formula. Too bad it killed people, but look, let's, look, <laughs> let's put things in perspective. And here's another, this is, this record was not even, this was not even released in America when this came out first, because it was the end of vinyl era. And so I bought an import version that no doubt was cut from a digital, digital source, and it was okay. And then you guys did this great record, one of their best records, and uh, it should be in every collection. I have to, I've got to make yeah, a list. Yeah, Lobos titles came out really great. Yep. That one and I Light of the Moon. Yep. All the Grateful Dead stuff we've done. It's been a pleasure working with their organization. Yep. Um, obviously, all the Miles Davis we've worked on has just been just a... Uh, Incredible gift. Yeah. Well, so here's like uh, turntable belts, little feet, uh, accessories, cable termination stuff, everything. Stereo to mono, jumpers. You jumpers. need it, we got it. Wow. We're a one stop shop here. Do you have fuses? Oh, yeah. You know, that's why I, I blew a fuse in my preamp, and there's no place, the Radio Shack's gone, there's no place to buy fuses, and you gotta order them online and wait. For them to be delivered. Yeah, we sell all the uh, uh, the hi-fi tuning. Fuses can't make a difference either. That's true. Nothing makes a difference. The naysayers can talk all they want. We know that. Exactly. Pram sleeve phono preamp. It's like they say. They say. You're telling me that the electricity goes all the way from the power station to your house and the last two feet make a difference. And I say, you're right, you're, it can't make a difference and don't put a water filter on the end of your faucet because it can't possibly get rid of the crap that's coming what out. What I like to tell people is it's not the last six feet, it's the first six feet that your system sees. That's right. That is right. So here's a ton of accessories, all the still points, isolation devices, yep. spikes, stands. Good stuff. The uh, the good old tried and true Sure Stylus. Yeah, I stage. have one of the, I have an original one of those from like 50 years ago, and I used it the other day, and it, it was fine. It it did it. It was. I needed two grams. It gave me two grams. You know. We have earplugs. We've got tubes. We've got everything. Wow. Tons of record brushes, record mats. Um, there might be some cool stuff in here. Let's take a look. Locked. This is where all the. Uh, Good stuff. The is. really expensive phono cartridges are. They're kept in a in a locked room. You have to because the we five, have five headphones finger. now that are four thousand yeah. dollars a pair. Five finger discounts. It's hard, you know. And we do let customers roam around every yeah. once in a while. And but not in there. You know. No, just like the one. Well, during the day, this would be yeah. open. So I saved the best for last. And we've got oh. a long way to walk. I got to keep stopping and looking yeah, of for. Course. It's hard to get out of the record section. Some of these are good. This label has done some really good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then some not such good stuff. You know, but like the good stuff, the, the good stuff they do is really good. Listen, everybody makes their mistakes, you know? Never been a Rush fan, so I can't, I can't. Really? Just one of those groups I just I, I don't get it, but You're I more of a prog guy from that era. Uh, you know, from that era I liked uh, King Crimson. I liked uh, Yes. I like Yes. Yeah. Sit down, shut up, stand up, turn around, <laughs> see yourself, see me. That guy's busy telling everybody else what to do. <laughs> look up, look down, <laughs> see yourself. Yes. Don't look at me like that. It's a great record. That's a good record. I've got an original of that, I think. Everything they do is cut from tape. Speaker's Corner is a great label. Yep, great label. Been around. They've been doing it from back when nobody was doing it. 
Now we used to have racks and racks and racks of uh, digital product, but right now all that's left uh, that we sell are Super Audio CDs yeah. from every label that makes them. And that's it. The CDs just aren't worth much anymore. Wow. It's the forgotten corner. And this looks like Beastie Boys. Is this Beastie Boys? Okay, was that good? That was good for an old guy to know. I have, I have the originals of all these. They're really collectible. Yeah. It's insane. I've got the original of this. Yeah, those are incredible records. Collectible. You know what's really collectible? All the records that were released in the 90s in limited amounts because nobody wanted records. You know, like I, was, I, I have Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Twins on the original. Yeah. Somebody noticed it in one of my videos last week. There's just this much sticking out. And I guess, whoa, is that an original? I said, yeah. I will retire on that record. Yeah, all the Beatles stuff, stereo and mono. The box set on the mono is out of print, but they still have uh, some of the So the individual in the titles are still... Not all of them, but some of them. And as, as they go, they're gone? Is that going to be it? Yeah. Wow. That was an expensive box set, but that mono box set was magic. It was worth it. Oh, I know. Every penny. I know it was great. I was helped on that, and I was so that that'll be on my gravestone that I helped. <laughs> I helped them because they were going to do that from the CDs. They were going to take the mono CDs that they had made and just cut lacquers. That's what they were going to do, and they didn't. They did it from the tape, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan Adams catalog up here. These are great records. I don't know if uh, you know all those albums. I've got, a, I've got so many records, and yet I come here and I look through here. I don't have this happens. one, Heartbreaker. This is an incredible don't have, don't album. Have you should have this album. I don't have it's it. It's just gorgeous. I just don't. I have, I have this one. Gold is right here. I have this one. This is Glenn Johns produced this one. Mm -hmm. That was the toughest interview I ever did. He was really tough. They told me he was going to be tough, and he was. I kept trying to agree with him, but he kept thinking I was in, I was actually contradicting him, and I wasn't. <laughs> it was just like. But I did save the best for last. But I will say this is this is even bigger than I was expecting it to be. I thought it was going to be big, but it's even bigger than I was expecting. Well, we keep a low profile around here. Yeah, this might be the first video we've ever shot here in the warehouse. So wow. I don't think uh, many of your readers have ever seen this place. No. We've got tons of customers in Chicago that come in all the time. Yeah, of course. They spend a lot of time here. Oh, here. great. I mean, what's amazing is your, your, your catalog that you send out is so impressive that on some level, it's not as impressive to come to the warehouse because the catalog is so beautiful. So right over here is where we do all of our photography because we do all of our own photos for our catalogs and our website. It's kind of dark back there. I don't know if you can see Yeah, it, sure. We've got an incredible photographer. Danny does an incredible job for us. And is he like, he's not a full-time employee. He comes no, in, he, yeah. when we need him. But you have a thing there for him to use, of which course. is good, yeah. where uh, our wow. cartridge setup guys do uh, a lot of turntables. We do uh, dozens a day. Uh, we mount cartridges, we set them up for people, and, uh, and we do it all uh, as a courtesy. Wow, when, when, once you start seeing all these records laid out like this. We've got some used stuff that we sell. We always uh, are finding interesting things to sell. Is this mostly uh, people come in to buy the used? Yeah. Wow. Look at this. Lots of crazy stuff. My favorite thing about the 78s is just the labels. They're so cool. I'm Hans Christian Anderson. I, I, I'm old enough to see that, having seen that in the movies. Danny Kaye. I'm Hans Christian Anderson. La, 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 la. We buy collections from customers or anybody, and we just try to sell them to get, you know, help them out. Look at this. I love those old record boxes. Whoa. Help me, help me, I'm stuck in a record box. Help me, help me. Dream Lucky Blues by Julia Lee. So people come and buy these things, or you just... Yeah. Oh. Every weekend we have like different categories where we'll have a 
a comedy weekend or a jazz weekend or a soul weekend or a classic rock weekend, uh, spoken word weekend, kids music weekend. Uh, we just love getting our customers to come in and if they can get a bargain while they're here, that's, that makes it all the more fun. Sinatra, a man and his music. Don't make fun of Frank. No, I love Frank. Come on. Okay, now you say you're taking me to the best part. Yeah, this, recently uh, we put up these two rooms. So come on in. Uh. These showrooms have been uh, an incredible tool for training, for the sales team, for all of our vendors to come by, and our customers to sit and listen to gear. Yeah. And uh, we worked really hard. We built these rooms from scratch. Um, they're, they're all treated. They're really nice sounding rooms. This is the Vicoustic room. Um, we've got systems from Levinson, from AVM, from Macintosh, balanced audio technology. Um, a lot of the gear that's normally in here is at Exponent now, right. so you're not seeing everything. Right. That's the Luxman table, which is great. Yeah, with a Jellico arm on it. Yeah. And these are the uh, Sonus Fiber uh, Very, whatever it's called. Or, and these are uh, ATCs? Yeah, we are big ATCs. They're fans. great. I mean, they're, they're great speakers. They're incredible. The powered ones, you're done. You can get that and plug whatever you want into it. Well, here's one of the mobile fidelity tables. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, Josh. <laughs> I got to go. I got to review one of these. You do. I like what it looks like. I like, yeah. $1,200. Including the cartridge, all made in the USA. Wow. Um, this was a real incredible project to work on. I'm and sure. As it, you know, we uh, worked with Alan Perkins. Yep. And I'm sure that this guy. was more difficult than you Im imagined it might be. Absolutely. Because the turntable is supposedly simplicity itself. What do you? It seems like a simple mechanical device, yep. but it's way more difficult to build a a turntable and an amplifier. That works That works yep. properly and works well. This is so much... And that really is why we set up our own facility in Ann Arbor, and uh, I'm sure your readers know John Schaefer from Wadia. He's uh, heading up the Mobile Fidelity Electronics ah. facility, and uh, we've been so fortunate that people all over the world want to hear these tables, and we can't make them fast enough. Really? That's a good it's reason just, not to ask for a review. You wouldn't. You don't need a review if if you can't make them fast enough. Why? Re we'll get you a ticket. Yeah, when the time is right. When of you, when course. Um, over here, we've got a lot of VPI stuff. Uh, our relationship with VPI goes back a long, long time. Um, we are very proud to represent their products, and uh, we. Yeah, we yeah they've, they've, really, uh, they've really upped their game, too. They've really upped their game. Yeah, that's an Avenger. Yeah, I'm getting one to review. And here's the Mark Levinson table that uh, they worked with VPI. On. Yeah. And I spoke to them at, at to CES, and they told me that they had an idea of how many they hoped they would sell, and it's way beyond what, sure they, it is. what they were thinking. And this is a Michelle Gyro deck? Yeah. Still sell those? Yeah. Still good? Yeah, it's a, it's a true sprung suspension table. Yeah. It's cool, and it's fun, and it sounds great. I think I read your f first reviews on them 20 yeah, years, years ago. ago. Yeah, it was a great table when I reviewed it. And and this is the their arm, which is a modified rig arm with a, their own counterweight kind mm -hmm. of deal. Yep. Correct. It's good that it's still they're still doing it. I like that. Yeah. So this is the big room. Ooh. All of the great gear is uh, at Exponent now. That's but okay. uh, we still have some great stuff here. We've got a VPI Titan here. I think it's uh, one of the few on display in America. Um, that's a beast of a table. Yeah, so you've got the, you got the rim drive, and you have the double platter thingamajig. And this is Alan Perkins' Revolution turntable. Correct. Great table. We've got some great uh, uh, MyTech DAC and an render server. Um, we've got these new uh, JBLs, which are just incredibly fast and dynamic. Wow, that's great looking. These are the K2s. They're beautiful. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. And you got those those uh, still point aperture room treatment devices are amazing. Yeah, we have them all over this. It is those things are sick. It looks like a picture frame, and what's going on in there it can't be anything but a picture frame. But it it's it's amazing. They just suck out. They just anything that's supposed to not be reflecting of that where that is put does not reflect. Well, Bruce and his team at Still Points have uh, done some incredible things with vibration control, yep. and I think that technology is inside these panels, yep. and uh, the proof is in the listening. And those racks are good. I got one of those racks. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It's good. Look, you can actually sit three people. In my room, there's room for one person. It's <laughs> sad. That is sad. It is, but it's, it's not a social place. It's a... It's a work room. It's a work room, yeah. How big would you say this room is? Uh, I think it's 22 by 33, something yeah. like that. It's a good-sized room. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in the inner sanctum office of Music Direct's Josh Bazaar. And there's Josh's card. Here's some of Josh's books. There's an Apollo lacquer up there. And uh, the Beatles. And he's got... Look, direct marketing rules of thumb. That's, imp that's important to have if you're in direct marketing, which they are. And some Led Zepp stuff. More records. You know, this you this is this is how you want to see an office. You hope to see an office like this for someone who's in Josh's position. You you don't expect to see a neat a neat office. You, this is a guy who works hard, has a lot going on, has a lot of responsibilities. Records coming in and out, reissues for Mobile Fidelity. Music director selling all kinds of stuff on their website. Okay. Well, I'm so glad you came. Um, unfortunately, you didn't get to meet all the great people we have here because it's after hours. Right. But uh, it was a pleasure walking you around the building and showing you uh, what we're about here. And uh, I hope you and your readers uh, found it interesting. I had a great time, and I was amazed by how much stuff is here. And uh, it's amazing what you guys do and the records you put out. And all the equipment that you sell, you're like Goodwill Ambassadors for Hi-Fi all over the place. It's what you sell worldwide? Absolutely. Wow. Good. Great. I watch you grow. And all of us who have believed in records and believed in analog and believed in vinyl, we've all thrived. And all these people that think it's crazy and a hipster thing and it's going to go away in five years, they're wrong. No, they're it, wrong. The infrastructure is now built. It is strong. The pressing plants can put out the records. The records are great. Everything is going good. And it's not going to stop. It's just going to grow. Long live analog. You bet. Long live analog. Long live records. Amen.